Do you have any like gold pieces of advice to men about dating? I know that's a really broad topic, but is there like any one thing that you see that men do incorrectly? It's an interesting question. I always say in terms of dating in general, as a general advice, just remember it's a numbers game. That's what I tell people. Like, because people go on three dates and then they get discouraged and they say, everybody's a jerk. I said, it's a numbers game. You have to go through to find the right person takes, you have to, you have to meet a lot of people. That's just a reality. Like, just like you don't walk in. If you want the dress that fits you, you don't put on two dresses and go, nothing fits me. Right. You know how that is. You have to, so, so it's, it's a fit thing. It's all about the fit. So not to get frustrated, not to generalize, but that's sort of a general dating advice and to be patient in terms of men, what do they do wrong? They, um, they don't listen. Uh, I think the most important thing is to be a good listener. Talk less, listen more, reflect her feelings. I think that's what women want. They want a guy that that will listen. Yeah, I think one thing that I've, you know, seen a lot and 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 heard a lot about is that you know men are fixers, and I see this with my husband definitely. You know, I want to complain about something, I want to get something off my chest, and he wants to offer me all these solutions and you know tell me what I should do to fix it. But like, I know what I need to do to fix it. Like, I know what my path is. I just want to unburden myself. Exactly. That's what women want. They want empathic listening. They want their emotion reflected. Uh, you know, so if, if she comes home and says, you know, I, um, I really hate my boss, uh, a guy wants to jump in and say, well, maybe you should change your job. Maybe, you know, we should complain to the superior. But sometimes all we want is to reflect the emotion. Say, instead, if you'd say something like, you know, I realize this job has been really tough on you and you're doing a great job, or I realize you're, you know, you're very frustrated. It's not necessarily about problem solving right away, but it's about empathic understanding and reflecting the emotion. Acknowledge. Right. So along those same lines, what about sex advice? Um, you know, I have a lot of men who DM me, you know, asking if penis size is important. I know that a lot of men feel that they fall short in the bedroom. What what kind of advice would you give to guys like that who are insecure about their performance? So the first thing I always say, it's not about the size. It's about the fit between people. And that's why dating and sex is a numbers game, because some people just fit better together, right? Because every person's different in terms of their anatomy. And there's large individual differences and, and there's preferences. So the you can't predict the fit. It's not about the size at all. For me, it doesn't matter whatsoever. Uh, it's, but it is about the fit with some people. You just have, uh, anatomically better fit and, uh, chemistry. So, um, that's the most important thing. Do not get fixated. There is a lid for every pot. There's a lid for everyone's pot. So that's why the, the main thing is not to give up, not to get frustrated. And remember, like I said, it's, it's a numbers game. You have to meet a lot of people. Um, so, but in terms of, the one piece of advice for men is to go slow. I think if there are, I hear complaints from women, both as a therapist and as a friend, then one of the biggest complaints is that men rush things. They rush foreplay. They rush kissing. Women love foreplay. It takes, there's a huge gap in terms of arousal um, between men and women. Uh, female um, sexual desire is spontaneous. Female sexual desire is responsive to the environment. So like I always tell them, it's like Letterman said, you know, men are like fire. They're always ready. I mean, I'm sorry, men are like firemen. They're always ready. Women are like fire. It takes a bit to get them started. Then they'll burn with great intensity. So I think it's the patience and uh, slow down. I tell, I I always tell men to slow down sexually. They tend to rush things. You know what I mean? The touch has to be lighter, slower. Um, It's just, you have to, to let her uh, feel the arousal. God, that's such a, I've, you know, of all the conversations that I've had with somebody like sex therapists and, and other women on, on how to please a woman, that's like the number one thing is, is, is that men rush things and that women take a while. But I love your analogy, you know, about how women are like their sexual response is like environmental is like based kind of on like what's happening around them. It's not just like a a genital thing. And I find that to be so incredibly true. Yeah. Um, um, I guess I always tell them that men are very visual. It's easy for their response is very kind of automatic, testosterone driven. 
women are more complex because for us, sex is a full body and mind experience, right? A full body experience. And we're more, uh, you know, our um, olfactory sense is, is much, much greater. So smell is important to us. Our audit, we're more auditory than just visual world. Um, so we have to, so it's, it's um, a lot more, uh, a lot more senses are involved for a woman to be aroused. It's not just so visual. Right. What do you think is the one thing that you would, you think that men need to understand about women? I think that one of the hardest things for men to understand is that, um, you, you know, we're just by nature more emotional and our brain is different. So it's not because we want to be more emotional, but women have a much thicker, um, corpus callosum, which is the part that connects the two hemispheres. So we can't compartmentalize like men do. Like men, men could, you know, once they're focused, say on sex or whatever it is, they can put everything else away, right? They're able to compartmentalize things and everything is in different compartments and to shut off. We can't do that because our, our hemispheres are more connected. Our brain is more interconnected. So if we have problems or issues, it's hard for us to just shut them down. Like we can't just forget about them. We have the revolving to-do list. We have all these things interfering sometimes with our arousal or our ability to connect in the moment. So sometimes we just need longer time to be able to switch. Uh, and we can't, you can't just, like I said, put things away in neat little boxes the way men do. We're different brain. Yeah. And also I think one of the other... The other really important advice is that women love face-to-face conversations. We find we have oxytocin release, which is, it's a calming hormone. We like that face-to-face conversations. Well, that's something that most men and women need to understand is that men find face-to-face conversations that kind of that that confrontational a lot of times while women find them soothing. So when a woman wants to have a conversation like this, um, a lot of men kind of avoid that. So one of the best things to discuss things is if you are um, side by side. So for men, side by side communication is more soothing. Face to face is kind of a confrontational thing because from an evolutionary perspective, the only time men would talk face to face usually is before the battle. So if you want to have a good conversation, important conversation, go for a walk and then talk uh, instead of that face to face sit down thing that women want to do. That is a really solid piece of advice that I'm going to take home with me. That was, that was, I've never heard that before. And that totally makes so much sense to me. Yeah. So Um, it's easier to talk if they're doing something, if you're like gardening together, if you're working, if whatever it is you're doing, but it's not, it's not confrontation with the side by side as opposed to face to face. Okay. From a psychological perspective, how do you think dating and relationships have changed in the last 10 years? Well, in some ways, I think it's harder to date because we have so many options now and they're so easily available, you know, right on the phone right there. So I think people are developing a bit of attach, um, a, a bit of attention deficit. I call it a romantic attention deficit disorder, where it's sort of kind of it's hard to focus on one person. Right. It's like a shiny ball syndrome. Like there's so much going on at once that I think again, people give up easily and, and it's sort of hard to, to get depth because, you know, it's just too many distractions and it's just so easy, um, right now to meet new people that, um, uh, I think it's harder again to, to establish deeper connections for people. So that would be one thing. Uh, I think also that, um, accessibility of porn, it's just changed, especially male perception of what women want and what women are like. And that may be an issue, especially for new generation as I see it, because uh, men are exposed to porn at such young age. I mean, we're talking 10 year old boys who are looking this stuff up on their phones. And then you wonder what kind of perception they're gonna have of women and what women want and what women are like and what dating is like. It's a one big social experiment. Yeah. 